These data are a text file that have been generated by a Specslab Prodigy system. And these are ASCII data that are not in the VAMAS format, although Prodigy will export VAMAS files. This is an example where the data have been kept separate so that more information can be gleaned from the data. Data in this format can be converted using the Convert to VAMAS file dialog window. And if we select this file, then the data are read and converted to a new VAMAS file and then opened in CASA XPS. These spectra are from a gold sample and they've been recorded in such a way that rather than having a single spectrum, which is the normal method, the data have been separated into 140 different spectra. And you can see that these spectra all have shifted doublet peaks. So we have a range of different energies for this 4F 7 halves peak and it's about 4.5 electron volts. This is not a charge compensation issue. This is a property of the hemispherical analyzer and the detection system. So if we look at a schematic of the hemispherical analyzer we can try and understand how these data have been acquired. So we have a detector which is in this case a one-dimensional detector but it can be partitioned into 140 different detector channels and from each detector channel you can acquire a distinct spectrum. So the first one might produce this spectrum here and the last one produces this spectrum and one in the middle would produce the more expected form here where the peak of interest appears somewhere around about 84 binding energy and you can see that they are actually shifted in different directions depending on which detector has been used and the reason for this is that the pass energy for the hemispherical analyzer is established and then electrons entering the hemispherical analyzer for the given matching pass energy will then be dispersed and the more energetic electrons hit one end of the detector while the less energetic electrons hit the other end and the ideal energy hits the detector somewhere in the middle. Hence we get a gold 4F peak 7 halves that is at about 84 EV. So the spectrum that would be presented for this gold 4F by a, a data system would be the one that has summed all the information from all of these detectors. So let us now go through and perform the types of operations on these data that you'd have to do to produce a single spectrum from these 140 individual spectra. And the first thing we'll do is calibrate using the calibration option on the spectrum processing dialog window and we'll use this option here that says measured defined by interval measured meaning this value here so we need to enter the value that we're interested in the true value but we'll first of all having ticked the measured defined by interval we drag out a box and as a result of that an, a range is entered into this measured field and this range has been defined by this box that was dragged out so now all we have to do is enter the value that we would like to calibrate to, so 84, and we'll press apply. And you can see that something has happened, but it hasn't happened to all of these data, and that's because only one of these, the first one in the active tile, the first one that was selected that is, has had this processing operation applied to it. So now these are all selected so I can now propagate the processing so I've got the processing tick box active none of the other tick boxes active and I say OK and what will happen is it'll propagate the processing based on an interval to all of these data so we now have data that are calibrated so that the gold 4F 7 halves peak align and we could in principle sum these in this form to obtain a spectrum. So while these are all aligned in terms of this energy interval here, what we really need is to do this as precisely as possible, especially if we want to have the minimum 
full width half maximum for this peak we want to make sure all of these peaks are well aligned and we'll do this by using the quantification parameters dialog window to create a region and then we will also create a component and let me just do this first of all for one of these so we can see it clearly and we'll create a component and let's try and just produce a slightly better fit so there's a slightly better fit and I've chosen a, a line shape to model the extremes here of the peak as well as the peak maximum and then what I can do because I've got these aligned I can simply propagate this in terms of region and the component and now I'm going to auto fit so having auto fitted I now have if I step through you can see we've got a, a peak and you can see it's the binding energy scale that is moving as I step through these data the peak is slightly jittery if you look at that the binding energy scale you can see that it, it doesn't move smoothly and that's why I'm performing this second operation is that what I'd like to do is rather than rely on the, the maximum intensity which was a bit uncertain because of the signal to noise I'm going to now use the spectrum processing calibration option and I'm going to refine the calibration by saying and I'll take the region and components I'm going to use this value here and I'm going to use apply by row first component and the result of that is a, a more refined calibration so if I now step through this hopefully you'll see that the the scale will behave in a smoother way as I step through these data so that seems to have worked out quite well so what I'll do is I'm going to copy to a new experiment frame the process data in other words the data that has been calibrated so we now have well aligned peaks here and you can see that the calibration is better and what's more I'm going to create a region and I need a region that spans all of these data and you can see that initially the background didn't appear and that's because I created a region that was outside the very first spectrum and as you can see I'm right on the edge here and that was that was preventing the background from being calculated but now that I've got it I'm going to propagate it and then I'm going to create a new file and that contains only these data from the gold 4F7 halves. That's to say that the data here has come from the region that was defined on the spectrum before pressing this toolbar button. Now one more thing that I need to do is I'm going to use a new option here that will let me rebin these data. We've done some processing to get to this point where we've pulled out a region, we've calibrated the data more than once, so the likelihood of the start and end offset and the increments for all of these spectra being the same is unlikely so if I rebin them I what I will effectively doing is I'm taking the the I'm taking the energy scale from the first spectrum in this list and I'm going to interpolate all of these data onto that same energy scale so the file looks very similar except for now it says rebind so it reminds me that that's the operation that's been performed and one of the reasons that you might do that is because you want to do some vector type calculations such as principal component analysis if I generate principal components you can see that the spectra are transformed and, and the third one is looking more like noise but the second one has a little bit of structure so even all these operations that I've performed would yield a peak that had some variation as a consequence of adding these different detector channels let's have a closer look at this again so I'll reset these data and I'm now going to use an option on the image processing window which also requires the data channels to all align just as I did with the principal component analysis and that's on the VAMOS info page and I'm going to convert these spectra to an image 
and that's an image of this goal for a seven halves peak so you can see how the data varies as a function of the detector so the image provides an impression of of how the intensity and the position and the forward half maximum varies as a function of the detector so let's just do one more operation well, let's close that one and back to these rebin data uh, on the calculator property page there's a button that will act on all of these data in the active tile and normalize the data so if I normalize these peaks this is not something you do before summing this is some simply so that you can do a check on your spectra make sure the peaks are, are similar and if I look at the image again that's what you would ideally like to see a perfectly vertical line in this image let's just give it a bit more definition so that that would make you feel very comfortable that you could add these together without introducing too much of an artifact assuming that you've been through this calibration procedure as I've just performed